up everybody, it's James, just hanging out and thinking about things. I got my trusty Charvel R4 out, old red, with the Seymour Duncan JB and Jazz set in it. And um, yeah, the other day I was kind of inspired because a buddy of mine who uh, has a fantastic YouTube channel and um, somebody that I'm privileged to be a part of his family, Matt, the Riffmaster Seligman, put a video out about his top five favorite riffs to play, and I was sitting around thinking about that a lot, and ah, came to the conclusion that I probably couldn't narrow it down to like five riffs or anything because of loving rhythm guitar so much. It's kind of where I started and kind of the thing that got me really obsessed about playing guitar in the first place, and it was back in the 80s. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I was sitting around thinking about it, and I thought, well, maybe I could film a video talking a little bit about riffs and about how important they are in the overall grand scheme of songwriting and how, in many cases, the riff is far more memorable than the thousand note solo that you see from your favorite guitar heroes and uh, don't get me wrong I love that stuff uh, almost more than life itself but you know it's always you know the riff that kind of keeps you coming back for more but yeah so I was just sitting around thinking and I've got the black star over here cranked up and it's got some Amen. thinking maybe I'd go ahead and talk about like some of the first riffs that I ever learned how to play and kind of what that evolved into and then my obsession with uh, downstroke and thrash metal style picking that was kind of the foundation of my kind of rhythm work. Uh, Scott Ian. Scott Ian was hugely influential upon myself as well as Tommy Victor, Eric Peterson, of course, Dave Mustaine, James Hetfield, goes without saying, the guys in Slayer, the late Jeff Hanneman, you know, great me rest in peace, and of course, Kerry King, and the riffs of that kind of metal when it was new and fresh, and there was really nothing to compare it to that came before that that was as heavy. There was, of course, a lot of heavy rock and whatnot, and my favorite band on the planet, and will be forever, and all time is Led Zeppelin. My favorite album of all time is Led Zeppelin Physical Graffiti. So a lot, I guess you would say, a lot of the riffs that uh, I hold dear would be more classic rock oriented or rooted in their foundation. But there's a, a correlation between kind of what they were doing even back then and kind of what happened later on, even with bands like Pantera or whatnot, and I'll kind of cover that here in a second, but I'll never forget it, I was, I think it was around 14 years old, and I got into my first rock band, and it was myself as the singer, uh, untested, but my father and my brother are both professional singers, and I was basically just trying to kind of follow in their footsteps, so to speak, um, and just going for it, you know, not really having any you know, previous experience and uh, exposure to like live performing or whatnot. My brother, on the other hand, is, is three years older than I am, and he was actually, you know, singing on stage with my father's band in the late 70s before he was even double digits. I remember him performing fifth grade talent show and he did uh, what's your name what's your name little girl what's your name by Leonard Skinner and you know he even had a little girl out there sitting on a on a on a bar stool it was like it was pretty OG actually it was awesome for fifth grade talent show so I was 14 I decided to go ahead and join a band and go for it and we were doing kind of like the 
hard rock or the hair metal, glam metal kind of stuff at that time. So it was Scorpions, Kiss, yeah, you know, like Motley Crue, Rat, um, that sort of thing. So those were some of the first riffs that I kind of learned how to play. Judas Priest. I think it was Living After Midnight was the first riff that I ever really learned how to play. And it was during the break of one of our practices, and I was always asking the little guitar player we had, his name was Chad Evans, this guy was amazing, he was like 13 years old at that time, and he had phrasing and maturity for years, he could nail all the leads, like Matthias Jobs, that he was nailing, you know, he could do like Eddie Van Halen, play Eruption, all that stuff, I was obviously just enthralled with what he was doing, so every time we had a break, I'm like, hey man, show me what you're doing there, show me how to do that. Not theory, but just kind of, you know, the technique. So I think like that. enough to, to kind of scrounge up enough money to buy a guitar around that time, maybe about a year later after we did the whole band thing. It fell apart pretty soon after. We only did about six gigs. You know, we were kids. The oldest guy in the band was like 15 years old. He was the drummer. Uh, but anyway, uh, to make a long story short, got a guitar then, but I never really took it too seriously and never learned theory, never took lessons or anything, and uh, ended up kind of taking a different path and going into some different sort of industries and whatnot with writing and some other stuff and other creative outlets and didn't really come back to music full time until I was close to 30 years old. I was actually like 27 and I went and bought myself a guitar and a small practice amp, actually two guitars, and um, kind of went from there. I remember I was mainlining the shrapnel guitar catalog. A lot of the um, Hot Licks videos, you know, the Paul Gilbert Intense Rock 1 and 2, you know, all that stuff, you know, that was what was influencing me more than anything because I've always been kind of, I don't know, fascinated with the whole virtuosity of some shredding guitar players, you know, dating back to guys like Frank Zappa, even Jimmy Page, you know, those guys are, are hugely, you know, inspirational important to me as far as my development as a guitar player but getting back to riffs it was just you know that was kind of the starting point <laughs> just learning those basic techniques and I thought man you know that was just so cool it was so cool to just be able to play something that sounded like music so that was kind of where it all started and um, Eventually, I gravitated towards the heavier end of the spectrum, which was the Slayer, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, the Big Four, Testament. When they came along, they changed everything for me because Alex Skolnick's, you know, not to use, overuse the word, but his virtuosity or his tendencies to play outside traditional kind of metal and rock kind of soloing is what drew me more towards them, uh, as well as the intricate rhythm work of Eric Peterson's also great stuff. But it was something that I thought was kind of missing from the other guys, even though I love and still do and hold very dear all of the other guys. It's just that kind of when Ingve came along in 1984, you know, we had Randy and we had, you know, Eddie and we had Gary Moore, Jeff Beck, and Clapton, and Knopfler, and guys that came before that, but nothing of that sort of like that really fierce, aggressive, neoclassical, minor, diminished soloing, and uh, there was just something in it that I gravitated towards, and that is why Testament for me were kind of like the preeminent, you know, metal band, because it was, you know, Alex Skolnick's lead work, in conjunction with 
the awesome, you know, riffing of Eric Peterson that just made them stand above everybody else for me. It was them and like Megadeth, loved Megadeth, of course, I worshiped Marty, and I think Dave writes some of the best rhythms I've ever heard. That was also one of the first riffs that I kind of learned and taught myself was just the one little riff that there is in Wake Up Dead, and to me is just one of the best riffs of all time. And it's just a always anthrax and Scott Ian and that I don't know what they did but they was lightning in a bottle that Among the Living album it was just how they mixed the overdriven guitars with a bass tone you could actually hear ringing almost clean yet it was aggressive and punchy and they just fit together so well and it was that opening riff of <laughs> stuff. 
Love it. But that was awesome. You know, it kind of got me started on that, them, and Metallica. It was the easiest way to get that. That downstroking, you know, it's just that was what trained you so you end up getting that machine kind of stuff.
awesome. But, man, man, there's just so many killer riffs out there. But I always remember the one from back in the day that I always thought was awesome was uh, Rat, the one from You're In Love. <laughs>
Yeah, loving it and just loving every minute of it. And I'm going to continue to do so, I'm sure. And guys, uh, this has been fun, you know, and you know, I hope that in the comment section, you know, you let me know kind of some of the stuff that maybe uh, I, you know, missed or whatever. I know there's a lot of modern stuff, you know, heck, I'm even, I'm wearing a Protest the Hero shirt. Uh, I love a lot of the modern stuff. Um, I do have extended range guitars too, and I'll get to that eventually on this channel. So, uh, hit like, hit subscribe if you dig, you know, the vibe and just, uh, yeah, I thank you guys for watching and um, hopefully you guys have a great night and I'll see you on the next one. See you guys.